take my sticky note down. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll initiate just to make sure everybody is, can be heard. Um, so Angelica, you can hear us and be heard. Present. Great. Alicia, you can hear us and be heard. Yes, sorry about okay. that. Um, yes. I was also just really quickly hoping that in the future I might be sent a panelist link because I did not have one. Of course, I, it, I, I got mine off of, the, of a calendar invite. To, so, but we could, we, every, all the panelists should get that link. And uh, Ben, you can hear us and we can hear you. Yep. Great to go. Um, so there's two things. Uh, um, we don't have a chair yet. And so we had talked about doing that this time. Um, and I guess it's up to the committee if we want to act on that or we want to wait till we have everybody here. That's um, And maybe before we do that, we just ask Margaret to say, what do you think is on our agenda for today? Margaret? Yeah, I think um, what we were planning to do was to sort of follow up on the discussion that started that we was had a week ago and to respond to some of the comments that were made. Because I know since that meeting last week, um, uh, Bill Brown and Tim have had a chance to look in more detail at some of those. So that's the main event today was to close and to bring up anything else that they wanted to talk about. So what to help the committee like to move forward on uh, our leadership decision? Alicia, at the last time, volunteered to be a co-chair if someone else were to volunteer. So I think their choices are uh, choose somebody amongst ourselves or or someone who's not here. Um, <laughs> it's always a good strategy, um, or to wait till we have our full committee available. How do, how do folks want to go to that? It would be Ben and Alicia and Angelica in terms of how you'd like to move forward. I was going to safely say I have no interest in being any kind of chair. <laughs> like at this point, any kind of chair. <laughs> I hear you on that. So maybe we just hold on that. And Margaret, if you could run the meeting so I yeah. can take myself out of it, that'd be helpful. Yeah. And I'm, I'll, take, I'll take notes. So. So I think I'm, I'm just gonna turn this over then to um, Tim and Bill to sort of pick up from where we left off last week. Great, uh, thank you, Margaret. Uh, that's what we'll do. I'm gonna share my screen so we can talk about, uh, although I think Paul, you'll have to let me. Okay, picking up from last week, we had, had a discussion of how we got from the site plan that was submitted and priced at SD and how we're going to tweak it moving forward so that we can meet the value engineering targets and maintain all of what was built into design from feedback from the committee and educators and staff and moving forward, how we can um, accommodate additional uh, comments. Um, we spoke and showed moving the basketball courts together, which was part of the comment. We showed a reduction in hardscape paving. We showed moving the outdoor learning a bit to uh, work with the reduced paving overall. Um, we had a rather robust discussion about um, the playgrounds and input there. Uh, and we are in the process of scheduling uh, a meeting with educators and staff just to confirm, um, but we are currently working with the um, design as discussed with the educators during SD, but that is a, a continuing discussion. Uh, we heard commentary uh, that this trail to the northeast of the site uh, is an important asset and one of the features that makes uh, this site so valuable, so we are going to maintain that in some way. And then in written 
and uh, comments that we heard last week, we there was some discussion of the plaza and the relationship of the parking drop off loops to the front entrance and that there may be a bit car and parking focused rather than bike and pedestrian focused um, and human focused. Uh, and so it's always a balance between getting people to and from the door in the most accessible route forward and making parking convenient to the center of festival, making sure that drop offs for both parents and buses work efficiently and quickly and safely. Uh, but we do think there is some room to adjust the balance a little bit. Uh, so we're going to go through some options that uh, adjust the geometry of the parking loop and the bus drop off loop just a little bit to tweak things a little bit. Uh, and with that, we're going to present a few options and I'm going to let Bill talk about the nuance and the differences between. And we actually looked at four different options for how we accomplish sort of a larger plaza area um, outside of the, the doors and have um, a less uh, automobile sort of focused drop off area and also provide a larger gathering area between the van drop off and uh, and the, uh, the automobile drop off. So um, you know, the geometry generally you know, stays the same in terms of the turning movements, but we've taken um, the area of the automobile drop off and moved it north so that we have a larger sort of plaza area between where the doors are leading down to where the van drop off is. And, um, you know, we looked at moving um, the vans so that it's not located to the east or to the right of the screen. Um, so we are we are able to make this area uh, roughly the same uh, dimension to accommodate the vans. But since we had that discussion, you know, Tim may be aware that we weren't trying to increase the number of vans, but what we wanted to really do was uh, take, you know, roughly two vans that were to the right and move them to the left. Um, so this results in, in this geometry. We also uh, looked at another scheme where we you know, changed the geometry slightly um, to get the tangent out of um, the, the driving path and basically do a circle. And we wanted to see what the ramifications were of that. And I think what you see is it have you know less of an area sort of directly outside of the building. Uh, but you still have reasonable access from the vans uh, as well. So as part of what we do on, on all these suggestions is we'll look at multiple schemes to find out what the best design solution is and then present it to the committee and have them uh, weigh in as well. Uh, the next scheme looks at actually taking it um, even further north and what the ramifications are of doing that with parking. So if we begin to eliminate parking, get our larger space out in front of the doors, um, we need to replace parking in uh, some location. And this scheme looks at locating uh, the parking spaces sort of on that curve. And really in reviewing that, we thought that it would be best to look at a different solution and alternative uh, because we'd like to take the cars that are shown around, around that curve and sort of move them back to where they were before. But that also has uh, site ramifications. So what we did is we looked at another scheme uh, where we, and you can see down below where the vans are, van parking and straightened out and taken away from that corner. We have a straight um, area for the vans to pull off, which I think is much better than having it kinked uh, like we have it. We take the uh, access for the cars uh, and move it as far north, I think, as we feel comfortable, providing a nice sort of plaza area out front of the doors. And it feels sort of more cohesive in terms of its relationship to the van parking uh, and drop-off area as well. 
But in doing so, we need to replace the parking spaces that we're taking away in the uh, three different parking areas. And um, we've come up with a sketch where we do not need to move the access um, to the public roadway. We just add some parking spaces to the north and change the configuration slightly and add parking uh, in that location. Uh, this doesn't really impact um, the site disturbance area to the north. Um, you know, where that walkway is shown, uh, that's to the north of the access drive, that's roughly where the roadway is currently right now. So we're going to be disturbing that area anyway. Um, so, you know, it seemed that we were able to accomplish moving the parking uh, north. Um, we're able to establish a nice plaza area that's cohesive with the van uh, drop-off area um, and, you know, make the circulation uh, work pretty well. Yeah, and then one of the other comments that we were responding to, we just want to talk about um, potentially having all of the buses discharge at the front of the line at drop-off and allowing all of the students to have the same experience coming into the front of the building, which is part of the reason for moving the van um, drop-off up, uh, in addition to cleaning the geometry and making parking, pulling in and getting out a little bit easier. Uh, but we also feel that this gives a flexibility to both use the southern entrance to the building and the main entrance uh, as operationally uh, the staff sees fit. And then might even be discharged and drop off in the morning, goes in the front where buses arrive on one at a time. And in the afternoon when they're queued and everyone goes to their buses, they might use the south entrance at the center of the building, which gets you closer to the center of the loop where all of the um, buses will be parked and waiting and then just for a frame of reference, I just wanted to show you this view, which you've all seen many times. Um, we have not updated it uh, since we've just done these sketches, but essentially where the solar canopies are shown in this view would be the start of the curb. So all of the area in the foreground of this image is that is currently devoted to parking and uh, vehicular traffic would be shifted to where the first support for the PV is. So the foreground of this would all be pedestrian plaza. And then the details of how that's appointed, where the bike racks would be, we still have to figure out. But uh, we just wanted to talk about the general shift um, of location of the loops today. Do you guys have a preference for one of these options? Do you think one of them sort of is stronger than others? I think D most concisely addresses all of the feedback that we heard. It makes the plaza the largest. The geometry of the drop-off loops is the simplest in terms of curves and parking on curves. Uh, you, you know, the one drawback of this option D is that a handful of parking spots are further from the building, and it's always a balance of convenience of people who are parking and people approaching the building, but we think this is uh, a pretty good balance. Uh, we think we've made the space in front of the building better. So I see Paul has his hand up. Yeah, a few questions. Um, in the parking lot, will those be one way? Do you anticipate the two lanes of traffic where the parking lot is, is one way or two way? They are sized currently for two-way traffic. Uh, I think at pickup and drop-off, uh, we've been told and we understand that it will be staffed and controlled. Uh, so the function at drop-off and pickup time is one way around the loop, uh, but it is wide enough for two lanes of traffic. And um, if that has to be adjusted to make it clearer or well-signed, uh, you know, that's that's something we have to get into as we uh, detail the site further. At our high school, we have like four rows of parking and they have that staggered one way, then the other way, then the other way, then the other way. So um, the second is the, um, I assume you would have to, it looks like you have bollards there in front of the building to protect the building from random cars cutting through, right? Correct. That's, that's what those dots are. 
Yes. And I think um, I think we had a previous comment about somehow in an emergency linking these two the two paved areas. Is that something that you're contemplating? Uh, that was shown in the SD set, and certainly as we refine this, we that will be included. That that will mean things like um, ramps to the curves, um, possibly removable bollards in some place. Um, but that connection for the 360 degree emergency access is certainly going to be part of the final design. That, I you. think practically it'd be a gap between bollards and removable. But yes, I would agree with that. Thank you. Since I have my hand, if you're, I, I think this is. This is an improvement over what we saw last time. I like that it's less car centered and more um, pedestrian bike friendly. So thank you. I see Alicia has her hand up. Whoop. Alicia's hand went up down. Well, Alicia? I just also wanted to share the same sentiments as Paul in that I think this is a very much improved version. And so I appreciate that you all um, took in that feedback and are bringing this to us. Okay, I also see that Kathy has her hand up. Can we bring Kathy in? I think because I think she's not on the panel. Can I do that? Here's the challenge. So this is we're not in public comment. Kathy's not a member of the committee. Um, okay. And uh, if we open it means everybody gets to participate. Um, uh, sorry, Kathy. <laughs> but that's if, if we want to open up to everybody i don't think that's our intent we wait till public comment okay so kathy thanks for holding that question we'll, we can get the image back up when we get there um does anybody else have any other comments um before we i i think what tim and bill need is confirmation that um you all agree with Paul and Alicia, that option D is the one that is the best, most responsive to the comments and that they would move forward with developing that. Going once, going twice. Okay. Well, um, Tim and Bill, what, what is next on your agenda? With um, taking outdoor education off the agenda, that is what we have for today. We are in the process of scheduling meetings with the staff to talk about outdoor education and the playground and other items of the site that we need to speak to them first. But it, and as soon as that happens, uh, we'll check on the agenda for discussion with the subcommittee. But for today, um, unfortunately, this is what we have. Although I say, unfortunately, this is actually, uh, I think, uh, a pretty good step in, in making the site better. No, it's definitely a better moment. And thank you for turning that around so quickly. Um, okay, so we have right now, I think in terms of next meetings, um, just before we open it up to public comment. So I think we had we tentatively had another meeting next Wednesday, but I think we may need to reschedule that, correct? So the, the next subcommittee meeting would be on the 31st. I think everybody's, oh, sorry, Alicia, I see your hand up. Um, it's okay, thank you. I just had a couple of questions or things that I was hoping we might talk about today or at some point if sure. today's not the right time. No, no. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I just ran up my stairs. Um, my, um, so a couple of things, the uh, basketball locations for the basketball courts. I was wondering if there had been any um, developments there and the rectangular play area that was in between the two circles. Um, so I had questions about those things. I know we talked about them <clears throat> last week and so to see if there were any developments there and then I had brought up at one of the other meetings and it had gone in the parking lot, mm -hmm. the, um, fence. the fencing. Yeah, the fencing. And yeah. so I'm wondering about the proposed fencing. Um, and then my last um, 
question would be about, I know that there was um, a CPAC meeting and feedback, and I was wondering if there were any particular things that we should know as a full committee that came out of that meeting, because um, I don't think all of us were able to be there. Um, so let me make the general comment about the basketball court locations the play area and the fencing that I think um, with Mike's taking a leave um, from the district, um, the district and the city are in the process of trying to figure out who's gonna take the leadership role in uh, this further site conversation because those three items all uh, to one extent or another were came out of feedback that came from staff. So I think we're on those three, Alicia, I'm, I definitely have uh, notes I think sort of are now in the parking lot for the subcommittee, but I don't think we can take them up today because we still don't have um, staff representation um, in this conversation. But on the, so consider them noted and being tracked. Um, the, on the CPAC meeting and feedback, I wasn't at that meeting either, um, but I know Angelica was and, and had um, actually asked for it. And Tim or Rick, were you either of you at that meeting or was it just Donna? I was there um, and I can report that the focus of the discussion was on building elements um, and program elements within the building and less site elements. Angelica, Angelica do you want to add anything to that? Uh, yes, and just to thank uh, Tim and Donna for being present at the CPAC meeting. I think the community really appreciated it, and I'm glad to give some summaries and I'll also send everybody the um, list of comments. Uh, so I'll, I'll go ahead and send the committee since it's important for everybody to have access to it. But I could just summarize some things that people discussed that were, uh, yes, building, but you know, there's concerns about um, loud, like noise and addressing some of that for our students that have sensory concerns. Mm -hmm. There were questions about um, mirror windows, um, you know, windows so that we can have, uh, you know, address some light concerns because that might be an issue, but as well as provide people with a possibility of observations. Uh, there were concerns about movement rooms, uh, also shade. So that was something that was raised about shades and students need shading. And that might be something related to the playground. So, I'll, I'll, you know, that's something to think about because Tim and Donna did mention that there was some redesign issues uh, related to shading, providing more shading outside. Um, uh, also, uh, quiet spaces, spaces for, you know, the playground came up as well, acoustics, um, fencing at the new playground to be more inclusive and support uh, parents of children who elope. So the fencing issue came up as well. Um, safety, safety issues came up related to um, how much um, the, the cafeteria is exposed. So sadly, we have to address some of those concerns nowadays about, you know, possibility of harm to our students and the kind of materials that the windows are made out of to prevent and address that. And in case of, and best practices for safety, for intruders, lighting. Um, and so I, I'll send the, the information to, but I just wanted to give everybody a sense of some of the issues that were discussed. And we really appreciate Tim and Donna addressing that in, 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 in such a helpful manner. That's great. It sounds like it was a really good good opportunity for everybody to give feedback so okay so Alicia I hope you don't feel like I'm I'm putting you off about this but I think we're we're kind of struggling to figure out how to bring the um, district perspective into the site subcommittee meeting because it's a component of those issues that you pointed out basketball court location the rectangular play area and the fencing so your hand is still up. So yeah, that... I just didn't want to butt in. I wanted to make sure it was my, okay. my time to talk. <laughs> um, but okay, I, I think that's fine. Um, but my my question there is there a way for us to get broader feedback on these things as opposed to just like one representative that will be on this committee? Um, so basically just meaning like can we reach out to other staff because there are <clears throat> a number of staff who are with the kids on the ground who mm -hmm. might have a better idea. Um, and who might have different ideas. Like I'm sure not all staff will think the same way about it. And so I would like more 
like broad feedback. Um, I don't know if there, you know, another survey we could do or something like that, but I, I want to hear from more than just the representative that will be on this committee in terms of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also like share that concern with community stakeholders. And so I'm, I'm also really happy that you all were able to meet with CPAC. I think that's great. And I'm hoping that we may be able to extend that sort of um, ability to other key stakeholders to have times where they can sort of come at, come in and talk to you all um, about what they're hoping or what their needs are to be addressed with the, well, specifically the out, the outdoor areas in the building. Um, so I'm thinking more particularly like, um, I don't know if we've talked to, if the rec center will be using our fields and if we've talked to the rec center or the community members who come and play there on a regular basis, or if there are sports teams or just all of the peoples who will be using the field. Um, if there's a way that we can have similar listening sessions for those people as well. So I see that Paul has his hand up. Is, is that in response to Alicia or is that? It is, but Angelica was ahead of me though, I think. Oh, sorry. My apologies, my little hand icon is blends into my bookcase, but um, no, I just wanted to add to what Alicia said and also, um, uh, you know, point out that our, a lot of our meetings are happening at 9 a.m. These are times that are not necessarily accessible for a lot of people. And one of the important stakeholders are students themselves. I know for the sensory environmental concerns, you know, that a lot of high school students have input uh, that can reflect, they can reflect and provide us input with about their experiences. But these meetings obviously are happening during their school day. So if there's any way that we could also get input from students themselves or from not just staff representatives, but also like, for instance, with the special education program, it'd be great to get information from, there's a lot of staff in the special education program. So um, as many, if, if there's any possibility of providing either meetings outside of these times or other ways in which people can send feedback, that would be really important. Great, okay, Paul. Uh, thank you. So I think, you know, the way I've been looking at this is that this is a school and that it's we really need to, uh, or especially the sort of core areas, and you know, talk to our educators about what works and what doesn't work. And Mike was sort of the person coordinating those those efforts. And I think, you know, getting, figuring out who's going to, you know, the, the district's in flux right now. So finding out who's going to be that organizing force at the district is is the, is the next step. So I think what we, you know, we, we have a, a principal and an assistant principal on our committee and hopefully they'll be able to step up and, but I don't know what their schedules are. So hopefully, you know, they, they've been really active participants. So, um, you know, I, so I think organizing that kind of staff input um, is something I think the district has to organize. I don't think it's really a, a, on the architects or EOPM to organize the staff um, and, um, making that an efficient way of collecting the data um, and the information that they can, they can bring. So I'm, I think these are all the questions that people are bringing up are, are things that we have not resolved yet. So I'm happy to, I'm, I'm glad that they're on our agenda, um, including the play area, the fencing and the uh, basketball courts. Um, so, yeah, so, so again, and as I think about this, I think about, this is a school where we really need to hear from the educators who work on the ground, basically doing it and see what's working. They know what works and what doesn't work. Alicia, did you want to add something? Yeah, no, I, I definitely um, appreciate and hear where Paul is coming from. I think my concern with that is just our timeline and like how long we would be waiting to reach out to people and to expect them to return the feedback. And so I'm even thinking like just to get something out there for now to for, to staff for staff would be great. I'm not sure. Like, I'm just trying to think, and I know that it would be more organized if we had like a point head person, but like we've done surveys and outreach as a committee before. And so just wondering if we could generate or work on something like that. So we're not just waiting um, and we're sort of moving things along and that then if it comes to a point where, you know, we didn't get as much feedback or we need some more organization in what we're receiving, that at that point, maybe we will have someone in place um, for that. But I think maybe trying to figure out a plan now might be wise and not waiting for the leader, the leadership to come in from the school. I see. Okay. 
Yeah. Fair point. Paul, did you want to respond or have it? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think I'm, maybe I, I didn't make it wasn't clear. Um, so I'm not wait, saying wait for a superintendent or anything like that. I'm just taking our existing participants on a, on our school committee um, and seeing if they are able to step up and be be that. Be, so they it, they're I think that's the quickest way to move and get start to get feedback because um, they know all the people involved, Allison and uh, Tammy do. Um, I, I wasn't thinking of a new superintendent or anything like that taking on a role. Can I just ask who Brian Bacon is? <laughs> He's with Brown Sardina. Oh, okay, great. Good to know. Hi, Brian. Good morning. All right, any other comments? Angelica has her hand up. Oh. Sorry, Angelica, and Natalie, she's got her hand up. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just going to add to Paul's, if, uh, since we have Tammy and Allison, um, I know through CPAC, what we did to, we, we circulated a Google survey where we got information through, uh, and that was sent to all the families with 504s and IEPs through the district office. So if there's possibility, and I'm happy to share our Google form of just copying that and sending it through the district to families and staff so that you could just connect, collect um, through a Google form um, information that might be helpful. Um, I'm gonna make one comment and then ask Alicia to uh, make her comment. You know, I think one of the challenges of this moment, and I definitely felt this strongly last week, is that um, we've, as a committee, sort of put the design down for several months, right? The last time, prior to last week, the last time we looked at the site design was months ago, right? Before the estimate. Um, and so I think, I think doing a survey is great, but I actually think um, in terms of getting uh, feedback, it's really important for people to understand the context of the design, not just sort of be, I think it's hard for people to respond um, to the nuance of the design if they aren't familiar with what the sort of governing design ideas were. So that's, I, I don't, I'm not saying that because I know how to deal with this. I'm just saying, I think that is a challenge of this part of the process. So Alicia, did you want to add something? Um, yes, sorry. I'm also just thinking about what you just said. Um, but what I was going to say, and it sort of ties into that is I was going to just circle also back to asking about having other stakeholders being able to put input and more listening sessions. And if that might be an option, um, and being, I don't know, more flexible and creative with our time. So like, if we want input from teachers, clearly meeting during the teaching work day is not going to be a time where we can get input from teachers. Yeah. I don't know if there's a way that we can do something at the school or something in person if we, I don't know, but I think being a little bit more creative about how we're reaching out to people, if, if surveys aren't the best option, um, might be interesting, but I was particularly coming back to that one just because I had also asked about meeting with other stakeholders and if we could have other, um, like listening sessions, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I guess what I'm thinking is if we're, if we're going to do if we're gonna ask people to respond to a survey, for instance, we might ask them to review um, a video uh, presentation um, about the design so that they are coming to it, kind of understanding what they're thinking about is. I mean, there may be a way to sort of combine the two and kind of get at what you're talking about, not and not taking meeting in person off the table either. Okay, I see Paul. And then I see Alicia again. And Angelica is ahead of me again. <laughs> I really can't see. I need to, <laughs> you need to put like a piece of black paper up on that corner of your bookshelf. <laughs> All right, Angelica, sorry. To Alicia's point, I think just a reminder that teachers are work to rule. All staff is work to rule right now. So we yeah. any meeting would have to occur during the school day. So, and that presents a huge challenge. But if, if there's a possibility that there is some kind of staff meeting or curriculum day 
that would be that where it would be helpful to talk to Allison and Tammy about what are within the school day hours when teachers may be available and then having a listening session. I think the CPAC meeting, it was wonderful that uh, Donna and Tim walked us through it and yeah. walk, walk through a video. It was a really good model how one could do that for greater community engagement. So I commend them on that. And I think, it, yeah, yeah, model. In terms of the survey, it's not, some of us that design surveys, it's not impossible. Um, you just have to ask very pointed questions. And yeah, having some kind of materials would be great or a video would be great. And you could ask just two, three very you know specifically worded questions tailored to what you're looking to get. Yeah, no, I think the work to rule thing is, is is part of the mix of the challenge of having staff involvement at this point. So, um, okay, so we've got Paul and Alicia, and I honestly don't know whose hand went up first. Probably Paul's. Okay. So I think you know. I think that's that's why I think that having Allison and Tammy, they understand that those restrictions that we have. Um, but also, I think our, where we are today in this building process is that we're refining a design. We're not opening up doors to more things. We're we're trying to refine the design and that's what we're charged with as members of this committee. Um, and, you know, we, we need to be continue to receive and we will receive today, I'm sure, more public comment. But I think in terms of the design process, if we want this project to move forward and stay on track, we're this is what the design team is trying to get our committee, which we've broken up our work into to, you know, the building committee and the site committee to start making decisions and um, sort of and we have to, This, I think we really need to hear from our educators, um, but I think we can't, I, don't, I, I would not support going out for surveys at this point in time. I think we're really just trying to get um, very refined discussions about, um, and I just, and I'm not equipped to answer this, like are two playgrounds better than one playground? I don't know the answer to that. So people who work in the field should be doing that. Uh, but I, you know, I, I think that, where we are in the process is we've got a design and we're refining it. And that's what our responsibilities are at this point. Alicia. Thank you. Um, yes. So I, I hear you, Paul, also. And I think what I was meaning is more like targeted feedback, like not just share anything you want in general, but like specifically, I think because I was thinking about the three things that I asked about, which were the basketball courts, the rectangular playing field and the fences, like targeted feedback. Like, how do you all feel about these three things specifically? How do they how do they play into your day to day work? what would be helpful in terms of these things like asking very specific feedback and i mean i'm sure if if it were a survey or if it were a session we could leave room for other general comments but i think the goal would be to get specific feedback on the things that we are looking at um and not just anything in general and i think that you know just like paul said like we don't know if it's better to have one playground or two playgrounds I also don't think necessarily that answer lies with the teachers, but I think their perspective is extremely important. I also think parents' perspectives are extremely important and so are the students. And so I think we need to hear from all of these people in terms of like the specific areas that we're looking at um, if we want to really make sure we're making the right decision for all peoples who will be using these spaces. Okay, so now I see no hands and it's 948. So can I just ask if this group is good for meeting on the 31st? Because we definitely need you. Everybody good, Paul? I got a thumbs up from Paul. Angelica, Alicia, Ben, could you all join us on the 31st? Same time, same place. Um, my apologies for me. It's a maybe. I'll be after the 30th traveling to the Ecuadorian Amazon. So I will be okay. dependent on my Wi Fi access. So perhaps, okay. hopefully. I will be available. Great. Okay. And so we'll uh, get after Phoebe and Allison to make sure they can participate. Okay. So I want to, I think we need to turn to public comment. Paul, can you see who is in? Maybe I can see who's in the audience. I don't think I can see who's in the audience.
Are you able to, to see, Paul, if there's anybody who has their hand up and wants to speak? Does Kathy want to come back now and make her comment from earlier? I, I'm sorry, I'm muted. I was talking without. So yeah, I'm promoting Bruce. <laughs> we have three other people with their hands up that we'll bring in. OK. Bruce, can you hear us? Um, yes, I can. Um, uh, I'm going to say something that I don't usually say, I don't even think of saying, but but I have to say I've been listening for the past half an hour or so uh, to the subcommittee's deliberations. I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned because I hearing um, um, Angelica and Alicia particularly saying that uh, they want to find, they want more information, they want listening sessions and, and, and all of the conversations are Brown data collection. And I have to say, I think it's the job of people on this subcommittee at this stage of the process if to, to go out themselves and get this, become informed and become useful um, members of a subcommittee. I, I, I really don't think that you're being useful members of a subcommittee by, uh, by uh, lobbying for um, other people to be brought in or surveys and so forth. It really is incumbent upon you as committee members at this stage, I believe, to have those conversations with these people, these stakeholders that you think are important and are perhaps not represented or not fully represented, and then bring that information yourself back to this committee. That's the process. That's the purpose of your being here. Um, and and I, I think it's very disturbing to hear this kind of discussion at a subcommittee at this stage of the uh, beginning of the design development process. So um, that's that's something that I really think uh, should be uh, made clear to the members of this subcommittee. Um, I have other things, but this is the this is the most important from my point of view observation of the past forty five minutes. And I don't think I'm going to say anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Maria. Going to come in. Okay. It by, by the way, just so you know, when you admit somebody as a panelist, it literally takes several seconds to come back on. All I get is like computer gibberish in the meantime. We're aware. <clears throat> okay. So um, I was at the CPAC meeting and I thought Angelica did a, a great job chairing that. And I have to say that I'm, I'm extremely frustrated. There are those of us who have been waiting some more patiently than others for months now to be able to come and have a conversation, a dialogue with the designers about the athletic field component. This is a school, however, the three of us that did the CPA application took it upon ourselves to do that. We reached out to a lot of members that of the community who use these athletic fields, community members who use these in organized and casual sports. And we have a lot of information that we desperately want to share with you. And it can't wait until June. You guys are supposed to be making decisions. You're talking about parking lots and about configuration of the site. We have a lot of information we really, really want to share with you that is not going to be conflicting with the use of this site as a school, obviously. We think it is harmonious with it, but we can't, we can't do that in three minutes of public comment. We can't do it with this stilted organization that you have, please let us talk to you. And then you at, we ask you questions, you ask us questions, we give you lots of information. We sit down with maps, I'll go to the field, I'll do whatever, I, you know, I'll, I can show up a lot of different times, but there are others who do this work who can't, right? And they can't be here at nine o'clock on a weekday. Um, please, please, give us the same courtesy to help you make this project as good as it can be so we don't have to be messing with this site 
after it's built. Let's get it right the first time. And we can do that if we talk with one another. Thank you. Okay, we promote Kathy to panelist. Thank you, Maria. Hi everyone. Um, I I had. Uh, uh, can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Um, I had one question on the proposed site plan D, um, and and I'm going to also hold it. I I know Denisco and Margaret are gathering information and questions or issues that have been raised because for the Friday full committee thing. So my question is coming in from the road. Um, bicycles and pedestrians. And I didn't know exactly where that is um, on the north end and or the south end. So it was sort of a question on safe, safe coming in, not where they come once they're in. And then the second was on, and I don't, I'm not looking for answers on this right now, but just sort of some thinking as we move forward on uh, bike racks. Um, there's uh, two types of groups that are likely to be hopefully riding would be the kids and presumably their bike racks would be really near the school someplace where they could park them. But during after hours or on weekends, uh, the athletic fields. So are we thinking of um, locations for two different sets? So that was just purely a question on bike and pedestrian coming in. Um, and then I've got a second thing, Paul, to say, but I just wanted to, and I don't need a response on this. I just, you know, I realize this is in the works. So maybe when we, if option D becomes the one that's brought to the full committee with some discussion, you can just be thinking about those. Um, uh, you know, and I, I went out and walked the site again, um, which I've been trying to do on trying to figure out what the entrance on the north will look like and where there is a sidewalk already where the kids might be coming and crosswalks. So just trying to think of getting to the site, not just do that. And then with this, um, I know Ben is still on, but I want to make sure that the transportation people at the school um, who, who are out there in the morning with the buses and the vans, Anything we do, we run by them with this to make sure that drop off works really well. And I know you did that first time around, but as as these things move, um, so I see Tim's nodding his head because um, again, I don't have an opinion on it. I just want to make sure that it works. Um, so my my other is the piece of trying to organize the getting the staff um, on Friday. You know, we will be talking with Allison and Tammy on trying to think of how um, some of the interactions that uh, Mike was playing a role with, with getting some key people. I know we have an outdoor learning Jen who has worked with the community gardens and stuff, but trying to think of where there are opportunities and Tammy and um, Tammy and Allison can both help us organize that. So as Angelica said, that it's with the work to rule that there might be space during the day. So just as we think of the next few weeks, trying to put that put that into play. And I think those are my main things. You know, I as you know, I was not here last week. I did watch the tape for the building committee, subcommittee meeting. Um, I think we didn't get a recording somehow of last week's site committee, or at least Angela said she didn't have one to send me. So I've been trying to catch up by watching them and I'm gonna make sure that we have links to them. So anyone on the committee, the big committee that didn't go to the building committee or that didn't go to the site committee, because I think there's a lot of interest in site. So one of the questions I'll put open to people on Friday is whether some of these, the next site, we may, make a committee of the whole meeting, Paul, just on there, if there are other people. If Tammy didn't come to this because Allison was listed, for example. Um, we don't want to not have people come or have an opportunity as either site or building issues happen. So that's my sort of comment as chair for the discussion we're gonna have on Friday. 
on reporting back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to bring Rudy in. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I, I sent uh, uh, written comments on Monday morning. I'm not gonna repeat all of those. I'm assuming the Danisco folks have probably got forwarded that and that the committee members all saw it. But two things I wanted to highlight from that is my seconding of Maria's suggestion that there needs to be uh, a similar kind of meeting that the CPAC folks had for, um, the people using the community recreational fields aspect of this project. I've talked with uh, a couple of the key people from the youth soccer program and the youth uh, ultimate program. And I know they just will have a lot of thoughts about where nets get stored, where how the field should be angled or not to get the right dimensions and overlaps and so on. So I really hope we can do that soon before we've you know, locked in the ultimate to bad <laughs> the ultimate dimensions of the the field area. I realize that you know we don't need to design the actual field layouts being used. That that's you know for probably for rec department and the, and the teams, but just making sure we've optimized the overall dimensions by how we've placed that portion of the site. Um, and the drainage under it and so forth, I think is really critical to do soon. So um, I just second that. I hope we can arrange that soon. And I, I'm talking to people and we'll try to figure out when they can meet, but their times are very constrained too. Um, the second point I wanted to just underscore is um, reserving a, the areas, and maybe you've done it on the site plans and I just didn't notice it in looking through the site layout is future outdoor uh, tentable or uh, areas for learning or areas we could build future outdoor pavilions. Um, I think that's, we're gonna see another pandemic or two in the neck, in the lifespan of this school for sure. And so this is our opportunity to take the lessons. I know everyone wants to forget the pandemic, but the schools were severely impacted. I saw a lot of ad hoc uh, outdoor spaces created from like folding chairs out on the lawn to like get, getting tents and stuff. And I'd like us to plan for that if we can, where the ideal locations and make sure if we can cheaply put power drop conduits out to those locations for the future. Uh, I think that would be fairly cheap to, to add to the options if we have to deal with that. And just, it's nice to meet outside sometimes as i'm sure the teachers will tell you and the kids so it does we don't have to wait for a pandemic to get advantage of these uh things so um i hope if you haven't seen my comments i hope you'll take a look it looks like you're addressing a lot of the things that i and other raised i really appreciate that about de-emphasizing a little bit cars at the front of the school and making sure our kids can enter the school at the location the front entrance where it's being designed uh, to have the maximum impact and the maximum security for them. So thank you very much. Thank you, Rudy. So Tony, we're gonna bring Tony in. Hi, Rudy stole a lot of my comments. <laughs> so I want to echo the thanks to Tim and Bill in particular and Rick for their responsiveness in considering a shift of the parking and car driveway to the north to place more emphasis on pedestrian and bike access at the front entrance plaza. I really appreciate those efforts to also direct student traffic through the front doors. I really think that's very important. So thank you. It, it, it's very refreshing and nice to see how responsive you've been. Uh, not that you haven't been responsive in the past, <laughs> just to clarify. Um, I wanted to ask about the feasibility of shifting the nature trail as far north and east as possible, and also linking it to the Fort River Community Gardens in the south, to try to get it to be as wide a perimeter path as possible. And I know there's wetlands to the east, but I wondered, depending on the surface of that nature trail, 
are there more restrictions on moving into wetland areas? For example, if it wasn't paved, if it was wood chips, if it was dirt, is that, can you go further east? I'm not sure what your plan is for the surface of the nature trail the whole way around. Um, at a meeting recently, one of the town councillors who was a campus planner at UMass and had designed parking lots asked about the number of lanes in the car parking area and that long driveway and the need for it. Um, I, I don't know anything about designing park, car parks, but I wonder, is that long car driveway truly necessary? Um, you know, the, it's, it's the entire length of that uh, parking lot. Is there another way to design it so there's less roadway at the parking, at the parking lot? And um, I want to third, Maria, Maria is pleased to have two-way dialogue with the stakeholders primar primarily interested in the athletic fields. And Rudy also put that very well. Um, I do think there's a lot of great input you can get from the softball players, the soccer players, the ultimate players. And yes, Rudy has represented ultimate a little bit and Maria has represented softball a little bit, but I think you're still missing a lot of uh, input from users of these fields and including Ray Harp, who's the recreational director. I don't know that Ray has been actively involved in dimensions of the athletic fields area and drainage and how large it should be for various field um, connotations or, or different layouts. And uh, oh yes, also Rudy's comments about outdoor learning areas and planning for power and Wi-Fi access points to as many areas outside as possible because like my kids were home for a whole year. And I think if we can plan so that if there is another pandemic that we can have the kids at the school and be outside and have the teachers like shade, it wouldn't have to be in the plans originally, but know that in the future you could add shade, you have power and you have internet capabilities at, in outside areas so that classes can be held outside in, in the case of a pandemic. And thank you again. I really, really like D. So I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you, Tony. And I see no other public comments, uh, Margaret. I do not either. So I think we are all set. So it's 10.06 and I think we can adjourn. Great. Thank you all. Thanks everybody. See thank you, you in a couple bye -bye. of weeks, okay?